Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Daikin here bringing you some more Genshin Impact content. Now, last time we talked about my five mistakes I think you should avoid within Genshin Impact's final closed beta. And today, I just wanted to give 10 tips slash tricks you may or may not know. Now, I know the beta has been live for quite some time now, but hopefully there is something on this list you still not aware of. Before we begin, as always, I'd like to take the time to thank each and every one of you for all the support, and each day we get closer to the YouTube sub goal I made for myself for the end of the year. If you do enjoy my content and want to help me out, make sure to hit that like subscribe button while not forgetting to turn on notifications so you know when my videos go live. Now, let's get started with the first tip slash trick. Tip number one, Sense Mode allows you to see the path spirits have taken. Yes, you heard that right, sometimes spirits may not even be in the same area or it can be on a completely different mountain entirely, but using a sense mode can give you the general idea in which direction the spirit went. Sense mode, as stated in story, can also be used to find out what's flammable, but it also can help you find out other hidden areas like breakable rock formations as well. So be sure to use the sense feature more often so you can collect more of our spirit little friends around your world and to find these hidden rock locations. Tip number two will probably come to no surprise to some, but is leveling up your characters evenly. The reason I'm stating this is, one, to have a more averaged out strength, since the game is all about constantly switching for getting different element combinations to occur for big damage. However, the other reason behind this is so you can actually meet the requirements for various dungeons. Dungeons require an average party level, this meaning if you have one really high level character and the others are being left behind, there is a chance you can have a low party average which will prevent you from completing various dungeons on occasions. Tip number three, understanding that dodge has invul or iframes. While at first it may seem like it don't, trust me when I say there is. However, the iframe duration is very small when compared to Honkai's impacts, so more precise timing is needed to pull this off. I repeat, this is for the beginning of the character dash, not when you hold it for running. At that point, your invul frames are long gone. Making use of this advanced skill will make your life versus certain enemies and bosses with slow big predictable attacks much easier to manage. Also keep in mind the invo dodge will not get you out of every situation if the enemy has more active frames than you have invo frames so keep that in mind as well. Tip number 4 is understanding that this game has an elemental resonance chart. Now I know I brought this up in my all new mechanics video however I felt like it was important enough to bring it up again. When you are making a party you need to understand the benefits of various combinations Personally, I feel like some are definitely better than others like the 12% elemental resistance when compared to the double wind bonus which gives you stamina consumption and cooldown reduction by 5% along with the increase of movement speed by 5%. Tip number 5 is all about talking to the random NPCs on the map for a chance for a side quest. There are various NPCs, sometimes even ghost ones, scattered around the world of Taviat, so be sure to talk to them especially when their locations seem rather interesting. It could be a chance for you to get extra quests for more rewards and experience. Tip number 6. Amber Bomb is the Persuado Miner. While it is recommended to have a Claymore or a Heavy Sword user in the party to easily gather these harder to break ores, you will not have one at your disposal at the beginning of the game. To combat this, using Amber's Bomb to blow up on these ores will take out a huge portion of these rocks durability or HP. So. Make good use of Amber's Baron Bunny to save you some time in the early game when mining for harder to break resources. Tip number 7 may also come to the surprise of no one, but is don't try to invest into everyone. While I did state before to level up your characters evenly, it is also not wise to try to invest into every unit you get especially once you start getting into the mid or late game. Your resources will be ran thin and it is best to start thinking ahead of the team you want to use after you do a first few 10 pulls. This way you can spend more time and spend more of these valuable resources leveling up these characters talents and ascensions for late game. Now tip number 8 is all about what to do with these unused characters and that's to send these unused characters on expeditions to the mines. While there are other resources you can gather, or personally seems to be the most efficient use of these extra characters. Make sure they are always on expeditions if you know they will not be used anytime soon or not at all. At least this way, they will have some type of use for you. Tip number 9 is unlocking your whole map as soon as possible. This also includes all your waypoints and dungeon teleports you can unlock as well. This will be a huge help later down the line when you want to quickly do story and dailies. So having access to all the various teleport locations around the map 
will make things much easier in the long run. And last but not least is tip number 10. In conjunction with tip number 9 comes the tip of marking your map. There will be plenty of times where you'll find puzzles you don't understand or simply don't have the characters to help you complete it, as well as statue orbs that you can't figure out how to get and many other situations. The best practice in this case is to simply mark it on the map. I tend to use different markers depending on type of things that I'm having trouble with, so be sure to mark your map so you can quickly relocate these various things you couldn't complete before. And that's it for all the tips I have for you all in Genshin Impact Final Close Beta. If there is a tip you think people should know and I didn't mention in here, please put it down in the comments below so we can help each other out. As always, if you like anything I had to say, drop me a like, I greatly appreciate it. And if you want to hear more from me, follow me on my socials. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you know the next video goes live. As always, my name is Daikin, and I'll see you next time. Signing out.